So, so why don't we, why don't we dive in since we got, we got about 20 plus right now. Um, and uh, welcome. Thanks guys. Yeah, let me fix this here. It's hard to look at the little, the little screen. Um, for, for those, I, I see a lot of familiar faces. I, I hear, I see a lot of familiar names and a lot of uh, new ones too. So, so thanks for joining us with whichever uh, interaction you guys have had with Neil and I. Uh, I've been an agent for about 10 years, uh, built this group up. So we have a, a few thousand people in the group. Uh, we have uh, uh, hundreds of, of agency ball clients uh, that, are, that are on and, and uh, interacting with, with real solid material like what we're gonna go over today. Um, and appreciate you guys for, for joining. Just a quick background, I've been an agent for 10 years uh, and, and Neil's been working with uh, Tony Robbins to help build uh, business mastery. So he's been out in the real world. I've been here in the uh, Allstate pond working with a lot of Allstate agents and, and helping to frankly build my own agency. Uh, up to a $7 million book. One multiple honor rings, uh, an inner circle, and a lot of it is from leveraging the strategies that we're gonna go over today. Like I said in, in all of the postings, this is, uh, there, there's nothing being sold here. So, so we're going to deliver this value. You guys can take it, you can take notes on it. You're, we're, gonna, we're gonna post the stuff up in the group. So we just wanna be able to provide value and help you guys grow your business. Um, so, with, without further ado, I'm going to toss the mic over to, oh, to Neil, and let's get this party started. Awesome. Well, listen, thanks, Craig. It's, it's great to be connected with you. I, too, see a lot of familiar faces and some new names. Um, I always like to start this way. It's really important. Write this down. Agency operators get tired. Agency owners get wealthy and have massive impact. All right? So... I understand there's a, a multitude of things that you could be doing this morning and that you've chosen to spend this 30 or 45 minutes with us. And my commitment to you is this will likely be the best 30 or 45 minutes you've spent all year to grow your business. But to achieve that, I need you to play full out, right? This isn't like everything else you've participated in where you're going to come and sit back and, and just blindly receive content and answer some calls and distract the group along the way. This is the more you put into this, the more you will get out of it. Okay. And, um, knowledge isn't power anymore. Coming to these things, listening to podcasts, watching video and content, you get answers to your questions anywhere, anytime. Execution is power. So I want you to play full out with us. We've got a framework here that we're going to teach you. Um, we're excited to, to teach you, but to get the most out of it and to provide the most value for yourself and your peers, we're going to ask you to play full out. Can you, can you do that for us? By a show of hands, I don't know what technology we're using. Raise yes. your hand. Say, <laughs> yes. All right. Good. All right. So let, let's dive into the content. Craig, I need to figure out how to put this in full screen so, so, so I can see it and everybody can see it. Um, How's that? We looking good? Yeah, but how do I make mine bigger? Uh, there we go. Okay, cool. Uh, and then if I can get the screens out of there. I'm going to get a joke there, but I'm not going to say anything. Okay. okay, so let's start with the definition. All right, RAD. It's, it's not just a, a RAD acronym or concepts. It, 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 it's in order by design. So these are your three must strategies for growing any agency. All right, so there's no silver bullets, tricks, answers, secrets. You know, these are not, you know, agency vault, three secrets to growing your business. That's not it. It's really pretty straightforward. The acronym is RAD. It stands for retention, acquisition, and development. Okay. And, and we want to ask whoever's making, it looks like Alex Long, you've got a lot of background noise there, but if you can please either mooch yourself or eject and take care of whatever you need to. But if you want to join us, please play full out and not make any distractions interrupting your teammates. Um, retention. These are your client protection strategies. Acquisition, pretty straightforward. These are your client growth strategies. And development. These are the client value expansion strategies. And we're going to dive deeper into each of these in a moment, but we had you start with an exercise. We asked you a question. All right, and I'd love for somebody to step out and raise their hand and answer the trick question for me. Who are your two most important clients? A 
Everybody's nervous because I said it's a trick question. So somebody go ahead and uh, do it. It looks like Athena raised her hand, Craig. All right, Athena, you are on. Okay, if, if, uh, if she doesn't have, uh, I do know for certain. Right. Tina McLaughlin said friends and family, what else? Married people with kids. Okay, married people with kids. Okay, yes. So these are all examples of your second most important client. So I want you to write this down. My two most important clients are, number one, my team. Oh. Oh. My number one, <laughs> right? <laughs> yes. Oh, and, and humor is important, guys and gals. We can't take ourselves too serious on this, but think about it. Your number one client, your number one most important client is your team, okay? Number two are your, your actual clients, your, your end users. And, and remember, if you've been our world, we don't have client, we don't have customers, right? We have clients. Clients are under the care and guidance of an expert, right? Our, our whole model is the trusted advisor sales strategy. So you have clients, but guess what? They're your number two client. Your number one strategy, your number one client are your team. But think about it. The strategies are the same. It's still rad. What's the only thing harder than finding good people? Keeping them. Keeping good people. Yes. <laughs> Atta girls, I love it, I love it. The women are playing full out. Let's go, man. That's absolutely right. The only thing harder than finding good people is keeping them. So you must have a retention strategy, right? Acquisition is, is our process and strategies for acquiring talent or, or clients or end users. And the development is how are we developing and training our staff, right? Or how are we developing and what are we offering our clients. So um, I, we're, we're going to go through this in backwards order because I understand most of you came for the sales strategies. So that's fine, but we're going to have enough time today to go through both. So let's first go through some examples and some understanding, and then we're going to workshop it because it's going to be far, a far greater value than, than Craig and myself just talking at you for us to co-create each of these strategies. So let's go ahead and start with the retention strategies for our end users, our clients. Okay, and in order to do that, we must start with a clear identification of client types. Okay, out there in the larger pond, if you will, in the marketing and sales pond, we refer to these client types as personas. Right, and you wanna go through a process of creating a handful of your top five personas. What is their makeup? We've got a, a specific strategy, and, and Craig, if you remember, maybe we'll do another one of these three things on personas, but we've gotta define these top five types. And, and a lot of that will come from the, the chat box, but drilling down and understanding what are their actual attributes and makeups, because these four or five personas, if we're real with ourselves, they're producing 80% of our results. So we want to get more of them. Okay, so that's the 80-20. 20% of our top client types or personas are producing 80% of our results. So we want to make sure we clearly identify them and we define them so that we can build out specific strategies to protect them. Okay? And it must have, we must have a strategy to absolutely delight them. I'm going to get these things down, and then we're going to go back and get some examples from all of you. Uh, we need to have a specific strategy for our, our top 10%, our top 20%, whatever it is, a, a follow-up strategy that's of even greater value. This is the number one way to fight off competition. Right? We must track and measure top accounts. What's the breakage? What's the slippage? Not just our retention percentage, but we've got to drill down and understand what, what, what's the meaning behind the numbers. We've managed what we're not measuring, but it's not just enough to focus on what Allstate is having us keep track of. We've got to drill down and understand what those numbers mean. What does it actually cost you to make up for a lost client? We must understand that people are driven to, to okay, 
We got to mute Pete or ask Pete to get present with us because it's distracting. Sorry, guys. There's no better way to throw me off than create background noise. I love the participation, though. Uh, yeah. what, what does it actually cost you to make up for a lost client, right? The reason that retention is first, even though technically we can't re uh, uh, retain a client until we've acquired them, it's not that just the rad analogy makes sense. It's our most important, right? Every month, quarter, year that we retain a client is far more profitable than what it costs to acquire them. So we must understand the actual real cost of a lost client, the economics, right? We need to understand their makeup. How often do they buy? What is the actual average transaction? We need to make pre-renewal calls, right? Uh, if, if we're making cancellation calls, it's too late. We need to preempt that. Birthday calls are some examples. New business cadence is another example. So let's take five minutes on this. Um, this is where I want you to to, to, to really participate. Let's get three to five examples on each. So in terms of starting with clear identification, we can pull this from some of the chats, but how would you describe in a sentence or in a, full, a, a few bullets your, the, the makeup or the persona of your top clients? Top clients. <clears throat> think, of the, think of the people who you're talking to every day the people who you have a higher closing percentage with, the ones that you interact better. So think of those good conversations that you're having, and those are the people you want to replicate and keep talking to, right? Exactly. The, the, the towards values conversations. So who, to, to Craig's point, these are the positive, not the ones that you're babysitting, hand-holding, that are complaining all the time. And it looks like people putting it in the chat, so that's cool too. We've got from uh, – I finally got this figured out, Craig. We got Betty Skinner says, multi-policy, good, good income households. Okay, great. So now you guys are all over the nation. So you've got different examples of that. So let's just put that down. But when you go back and work on this, I want you to get specific. Which, pol which policies make up the multi-policy? What defines oh income in your market? Okay. We've got homeowner, married, multiple cars. Um, okay, yeah, that keeps coming up. Uh, clients under 40 or 45 who are homeowners with multiple policies, good credit. So I want you to, I want you to, we're gonna get the general topics down. We'll get this out to everybody, but then you need to get, you need to drill down and get specific in this, right? The devil's in the details. So what, what is good credit? What about being 40 to 55? Um, two to three cars, 30 to 50, life insurance, retirement planning. Okay, great. Let's get uh, any more, anything else you would throw in there, Craig? I'm just, I'm, I'm typing it in. Um, okay. What, it, it goes back to thinking deeper, right, on who these best conversations that you have. Think of, and, and you talk with your LSPs, uh, what are the conversations where they're being most successful? And that's where you can redirect that energy towards the, the most successful calls, right? So it's, that, that's why it's so critical, these personas. Okay, great. All right, so let's go to the next part. What, let, let's, let's share, oh, it looks like we've got one more here. Ah, values relationships involved in the community. That's, that's awesome. Get that one down, please, Craig. That's from Lori Bray, absolutely. Right, people buy from people they like and trust, so they value the relationship. Remember from all of our trainings, um, price is only an issue when the value is not clear. We're more expensive, not because we're aggregated, at, aggravated and angry at Allstate that we're more expensive and we've gotten in our heads that we feel like we can't complete, compete. No, it's, it's that we're, we provide more value. So I love that, Lori, that's awesome values relationships because if you think about it your best possible clients they appreciate you you have the best possible relationships with them that's all awesome. uh, and and betty's so solid with the clients who were referred originally right because now they're pre-sold why is why do you think that these testimonials and ratings and all this stuff online is so critical because it pre-sells that client right they pick up the phone, they call you. It's inbound traffic. It's more likely to convert. And, and now your other raving fan client told them that they must call, right? So they're all over it. They're already pre-sold. Thank you, Betty. That's awesome. 
100%. Okay, cool. All right, so let's get three examples of some strategies that you guys are using to protect your existing clients. Um, insurance reviews on an annual basis. Awesome. Insurance reviews. Now, I, I'm curious, you know, I spend a lot of time in this with Craig, but I'm curious, could we do them quarterly? Sure you could, yeah. Just, just, just a thought. I love that though. Annual reviews. What else? Thank you for that. I'll throw one in. And I think it's, it's one of the most important ones is, is the cancellation audit, right? If we're not calling people who are late on their, their payments, like this is just somebody who may have may or may not have forgotten to make their payment and they're out the dough. If we don't make, if we don't get collect that money, right? We, we must get a hold of those people, and, and that is a, is a retention, uh, keeping that business in, in the, under your roof, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <coughs> How many people on here do, do these, do cancellation audits? Do, I do. Uh, we, yeah. we do, absolutely. All right. I, mean, I, these will, are people. I will say, though, if I might, may interject, that we've noticed that our cancellation audit is, is not typically the client we want. I don't mean that in a negative way. I just mean that they're not generally your multi-car home high value clients. They tend to be the same, you know, right. line 19, yeah. one policy only type clients. Very rarely do we have somebody on the cancellation list that is a high value client. And usually it's because their credit card expired or, you know, something right. like that. That's so, so valuable for everybody who's listening on this call. Was that Candace? Yes, it is. Uh, not, not only does, does she have a, a cancel, thank you, Candice, does she have a cancellation audit, but she has a specific filter against what she's calling a high value client, which is a great uh, name for it, right? That's your high value persona. So yeah. it, it, it's okay if we let go of non high value clients because it opens the space, the capacity for us to serve more valuable clients. So that, that's powerful. And for anybody who's not participating yet, this is why this is far more valuable that you guys are speaking and I'm just facilitating than me coming up with the answers for you because that's a freaking nugget right there. Thank you, Candy. Right. And, and something what, that, that goes off of that, Candy, that, that we do is we try to move them into that spot of becoming a high value client. Yes. So if somebody's over and over on the cancellation audit, they're line 19. Well, can we move them to line 10? Can we get them on easy pay so we can get them off the cancellation audit? So um, a lot of times, you know, sometimes the staff gets, they're like, oh, the cancellation call, I get the same people and they're pissed <laughs> off, right? And if, yeah. we can, if we can turn those people into high value clients, then we have an opportunity, right? And we're gonna, we're gonna have their ear a little bit more than somebody cold off the street because they're already our client, right? So um, great stuff. Yeah, let's do one more. Uh, Jennifer McBee's got pre-renewal call, calls, uh, updates to follow up and cross-sell, to-dos to check in after or during a significant event, hospitalized, maintain personal relationship. Oh, that, that's great stuff. See, it, it, what we're understanding here, folks, from these uh, participants who are, who are sharing with them what's working and, is that there's a system okay we can't manage people and personalities it's exhausting we've got to have these systems these strategies in place that as agency owners we're overseeing imagine the data that jennifer and her agency is pulling from these three strategies tremendous if you had something in place where you're following up with somebody after an accident after a hospitalization after a a cat, right? That's, that's awesome. All right, let, let's keep going. And the piece here is we're getting good things. You got to capture this. You got to take this worksheet and your notes and keep adding to it. We can do birthday. Um, all right, let's get to um, acquisition, all right? Acquisition. All right. All right, so acquisition. We we have to be really clear, right? Um, I think it was Candy or Candace who talked about the high value client. We must identify the net that we're casting. As we go out to acquire clients, we don't want the largest possible net. 
Think about the client interactions that you have, the most valuable. They're treating you as a trusted advisor. They value your time and yours, theirs. The least fulfilling clients are time suck. They don't value your time. They're constantly badgering you. We obviously want to acquire less of those and more of the others. So we need to have a, a specific net. We need to have a strategy for how we handle and filter those inbound and an outbound strategy for going after them. How are we promoting? Uh, what are our sales methodologies? What's the structure of our LSP team? How are we compensating them? How are we training them? Right? There's a concept that we use in business to business sales. Can you move that over, Craig? Uh, move. Cut off. Uh, called veto. Very important top officer in, in, there we go, in business to business. But here, it's more specifically known as the decision maker. You want to find out at the beginning of the call if it's the wife, but she can't make a decision without the husband or the husband can't make a decision uh, without the wife. Who is the top decision maker? Okay. We need to understand where are our competitors in this market? Where do we locate key decision makers? How do we create TOMA? TOMA is top of mind awareness. You know, by the nature of your agency, you, you represent, you know, a limited geographical area. How are you maintaining that top of mind awareness? So when the time comes, your brand, your agency is top of mind, right? You must have compelling educational materials and collateral for attracting clients. Do not waste money on all state tchotchkes. No one cares about a little football, a coffee mug, or a pen, okay? They do care about success stories, qualification, quantification. People move to third party, what we call social proof, far faster than they will by you selling them or convincing them. What are our strategies for generating lead in our defined target? Web leads, direct mail, SEO, SEM. What's our blueprint for going after these clients? How are we handling them? And also, how are we measuring them? I just saw Candace sent over, I love it. It's missing from here, social media. So what, what are we missing, uh, everybody? What, what are some examples of acquisition strategies what are your top examples of acquisition strategies that are having the most impact on your business that are landing you the highest value clients referrals yeah referrals what else um i don't think facebook is good but Right, and, and Facebook is, is good. It's, 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 it's a growing piece because we can target them. We can meet them where we are. I think we all have got to get better on filtering, right? And same, same way, before we get into these three strategies, I want you to workshop with your LSPs around the best calls. What's the, what's the makeup of this client? And really build out these personas, because now you have strategies that you can build to retain them, strategies that you can build to acquire them. Uh, it, it's pretty powerful. I'm not seeing where that's coming from. Okay. I'm just curious because. Uh, whoever it is, he's using our languaging though. He said, I'm just curious. So he must've been on our other calls. That's great. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's good stuff. Um, okay. And I'm just a terrible multitasker, so it, 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 uh, it distracts me. All right, so let's jump back into it. So Athena, LinkedIn for social media, definitely. What else? What else? We market specific zip codes and areas that are more high value clients. All right, now cool. Now tell me about that. I, that's Candace again. Um, yep. How do you get specific though in terms of, or, or you, how, how are you matching those zip codes with the attributes of your best clients? We know because we live in the area, we know which areas of Eugene uh, are the more high value as far as like the values of the homes. You can get those off of Zillow. Mm -hmm. um, we happen to use a program called AQS for our direct mail marketing. And we're just able to zero in on specific zip codes. And you just assume that people that live in that zip code pretty much all you know, own the same 
type of home. They own multiple cars. They have kids. They have life insurance, retirement. Awesome. Fantastic. I hope everybody's furiously taking notes. If you're not doing this, this is a great opportunity. Listen, this is all common sense. Not, none of what's being shared here is the secret answer or silver formula, but success leaves clues. Candace is giving us all here a clues about what those high value clients look like. This is super valuable. Thank you for that, Candace. What else? Who else has got something? Loan officer referrals are my top closed and highest value clients. Awesome. Cross sell current, okay, hold on a second. So um, acquisition, yeah, so that's acquisition. Cross sell current book of business. They already like us, win backs. Okay, so that's gonna be a development strategy. That came from Jennifer. Um, what else do we have here? Hey, okay, this is Alex Long, may I ask a question? Please, go, yeah, oh. go ahead, Alex. Um, a, you, you referenced AQS. Can you elaborate on that? I, I haven't heard of that acronym or that company or, or how you're sourcing those high value homes. Absolutely, Alex. So AQS is an executive advantage approved uh, company that Allstate uses and they're a direct mail company. So what's really cool about them is you um, lock down specific zip codes and so you're the only agent or all state agent getting those zip codes and they will mm -hmm. send you on a monthly basis all of the homeowners in a specific zip code that bought their home in a specific month so for example right now we're working on july so all the people in the zip codes that i've locked down who bought their homes in july are getting a quote a homeowner's mm -hmm. quote from me this month and um, and it's just, it's a highly successful program. I don't know what AQS stands for, but if you go out to the Executive Advantage website, they are on there and you can go then okay. to AQS's website. So, so Can Candace, I think the, the, the winning strategy is the new home movers, yes. right? Yes. Like, so yes. whether it's AQS or you use Zillow or whatever the hell you use to do it, is, is, isn't necessarily relevant. It's, it's that strategy, right? We want to look at the strategy, not the tactic. Yeah, and, and we want to replace uh, the winning strategy with A. You need to constantly be asking yourself, what else, what else, what else? I mean, that, that's all I'm really doing over here is asking everybody, what else, what else? Because it's, it's in you, it's in you. Um, all right, let's go, to, let's go to development. Let's go to these expansion strategies. Hey, now the thought, the thinking behind development is this. Who and what can we offer uh, our client base? Who, what, what are services, uh, policies, opportunities uh, that, we can, that we can create more impact and more value for our existing clients? So that's not only the, um, you know, the, the services that we can offer through Allstate, but any partnerships that we have. So really what we're looking for here are opportunities to serve the same high value client type with different ancillary offerings. And the more value we can provide our clients, the more opportunities we can develop within that relationship, it also feeds retention and acquisition. It feeds retention because we have more, more tentacles in them, if you will. It, it, it feeds acquisition because we're more likely to get referrals, all right? So we must have a strategy, we must have a spend, we must have a specific pipeline management, a, a progression of where we take people. If they, have this pro, if they have this policy, if they have this service with us, there's, a, there's an opportunity across all these other things. And we need to create that GPS-like roadmap where we're taking them because the reason some of the best brands win out there is they're constantly providing the right value to the right client at the right time. And sometimes that's not even something we make money on. Um, you know, Candace is from Eugene, one of my favorite cities on the, the planet. I enjoyed some, some years there back in my 20s, super fun. But like, you know, opportunities to send folks to 
um, Ducks games or, or whatever it is that, that creates more value and more connection with them. I, you know, the, the, the clear ones are the revenue generating ones within Allstate. The secondary would be opportunities where we have partnerships where maybe we're commissioned on them but someone else owns the relationship. And then tertiary would be just things that are adding value um, and, and keeping that sense of connection and community that someone brought up earlier. So some examples that we came up for partnerships, cross-sell audit, cross-quoting training, ongoing staff training, um, monoline audits, newsletter, uh, CPRs to increase coverage, what would a 10 increase look like to your entire book's premium, right? We want to drill down and get into the numbers. So let's open it up. Who's got some examples of their top strategies, uh, top development strategies, right? And development, again, would be expanding the value for your client. And everybody's on right now. Awesome. It may be a little bit of crickets here because we're not thinking about this, oh, right? So think of think of some, a concept that that Neil just shared, which is which is that cross feeding, right? Development feeds retention, retention feeds. They all feed each other. But one of the retention strategies that we were discussing earlier, uh, let me that CPR strategy is super is super important for this development strategy, right? You bring in those people; they're sitting in front of you, and you're helping them which is going to increase your retention. And at the same time, you're able to, uh, to present opportunities where we can increase coverages, right? That if we were to increase every single policyholder by 10% of their coverage and that premium goes up 10%, you just took a 10% raise. I mean, it's significant, right? Of course, it needs to be uh, necessary, right? We're not just going to increase people's coverages, but oftentimes, those folks that come in, their coverages are lower than what they really need, right? When we add an umbrella, we're adding a few hundred dollars in premium. We're protecting them better. We're protecting ourselves better from an E&O exposure. And at the end of the day, we're increasing a significant amount of premium if we're doing it with everybody. Awesome. And we got some examples here. Um, okay. A question from Lori Bray. Remind me of the 80-20 rule. Lori, it's 20%, uh, uh, excuse me, 80% of our results are produced from 20% of our effort. So borrowing Candace's high value client, her 20% of her book, that's high value clients. And in her case, with all these strategies, it's probably a higher percentage. They're producing 80% of the results. So the more of that 20% that you acquire, it's going to produce far more results, impact, uh, and premium for you. That's the 80-20. Um, customer appreciation events, e-agent messages, drip campaigns. Yeah, the thing with customer appreciation events is you want to have partners there so that there's, there's value that they're getting. You want to have the, the celebration component of appreciation for sure, but you also want to have some, some value and some other things that you can offer them. Um, e-agent email templates to advise products and charity. Yeah, I'm thinking more though of, of partners. Who, uh, who, who, are, who are you partnered with? And, and Craig, I know we work with agents all across the nation, so it, it varies. Some, some regions can't offer this and other regions can offer that. But what, what are some examples of, of, of partnerships or really affiliates that you have? The str strongest partners, and somebody brought it up, are those loan officers. Mm -hmm. Okay, what else? Well, we developed a relationship with loan officers, real estate agents. Uh, I mean, even the fire department, right? <laughs> bring in a fire safety, have an appreciation event, bring the fire truck. Everybody shows up when the firemen are there. Cops less, but uh, everybody, everybody <laughs> likes the fire department, right? Bring your calendar. <laughs> awesome. Okay, cool. So um, any other questions about and any other ideas? What else? Any other questions about development strategies or any questions about RAD as applied to our sales strategies? Okay. We, yeah, okay. uh, we use also welcome packets to all of our new clients. So we send out a packet that has 
you know, a wealth of information, uh, other policies and, and stuff that we offer. We even have free services for copying and faxing and shredding. And so we send that, that out to all of our new clients every month. Love that. I, I should just be saying, what else? Candace. <laughs> <laughs> was always you an A plus student. Me, you remind me of my wife. So you're sitting up in front. You have all the answers. I'm in the back. Like, oh, look at her. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I was always a good student. Yeah, a high achiever. And that's, that's awesome. And, 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 and Candace is a giver, folks. Uh, the contribution. If you're not doing these things, you ought to be doing these. And again, we're not busting your tail on it. But if you're not getting what I'm getting from Candace, is, it's come in parts, but Candace is running a program, right? She doesn't have a business plan or a marketing plan that sits there and it's antiquated. She's got more akin to a GPS. So at every step of a client's navigation through her world, something of value is happening that's hitting on all three of these. And, and she's tracking and measuring that all along the way. So I think I, I wanna leave it at that. That's awesome. Now, now Craig is probably gonna slap me for this because I always want to over deliver and add more value. And we had agreed we were only gonna talk about RAD as it, as it um, pertains to your sales strategies, but we have 19 minutes. And I know if we were to really ask ourselves what our number one challenge is, it would be hiring. So even though we don't have any boxes for you filled out and Craig's going to scramble right now, let's just, let's just workshop together. Let's dive in and let's apply RAD to hiring. Okay. So if we go with retention, right, we talked about this earlier. The only thing harder than finding good people is keeping them. So give me some examples of things that you do to retain your your top LSPs? Hiring is the hiring part. Offer benefits. Okay, Whether. offer benefits? Yeah. Sure. What else? Weekly training. Weekly training, training. Yeah. awesome. And I'll put agency vault training. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Athena, just put role play. Yeah, for sure. 100%. Okay, now keep, keep in mind, so, so um, benefits is definitely retention. Training and role play, they're, they're really development and, and the development first and retention. Um, but, 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 but good answers for sure. And again, it, I'm not trying to be right because that being right is insufficient for being effective. But from Jennifer McBee, we've got competitive pay training. Put them in the best, best position that suits personality. See, we don't even need to come up with the box. We just get people talking. That's it, right? And, and again, the reason that Agency Vault has been so valuable, or more specifically our assessments, is when you can understand the attributes that suits an individual's personality, not only their personality, but their success attributes. Now we can unlock the ways, the how to get there. But a magnitude greater than that is understanding their most important outcomes. So here's, and this ties into whoever SWA1370B is, is having an open door policy and good communication. Now I would share with you, I want to be really clear, is a, is a, is a strategic open door policy, right? Because for those of you veterans who have been to my hour time management module, if we have an open door policy, that means that we're constantly available for God a minute meetings and we're interrupted. So your open door is during specific times during the day, so you're managing that. But the point being is open door and good communication, you must unlock your LSP's most important outcomes, okay? I really want you to understand this. This isn't about managing and leading your people to do as you say and tell them to do, because then what will you have? You'll have employees, and what do employees have? They have jobs, and what do employees do and who have jobs? They leave. You've got some people in your organization who have been with you for 
a while, so maybe they have a career with you. But when you can understand somebody's most important outcomes individually, and you can tie those to your business results, now you will have people on a mission. And mission is of far greater value. In fact, I invite you to consider that mission is the most important retention strategy you can have. Because if you have individuals who are on a mission with you, they will do anything because they're meeting their family's most important outcomes. And by you helping them meet those outcomes, they would do anything for you. Right? So, you know, Tony or Craig talks about this all the time. And, you know, I'm, I'm really grateful for my partnership with Tony Robbins. We were in Australia two weeks ago. We're headed to Amsterdam Friday. But if I could really articulate this man and why he's a leader, you, you need to bring this into your organization. He is so adept at helping individuals and his team and us as his partners unlock our most important outcomes and build the strategies to go get them. So if you meet regularly and individually and efficiently, not in a reactive mode, with your staff, and you are interested in their most important outcomes and helping them achieve those outcomes through a strategy that you build with them, they will do anything and they will produce results far greater than what you can achieve by handing them a job description and a commission sheet. You feel me? I feel you. Okay, it got quiet. I thought I was bringing the fire and brimstone there. So, so I, I muted uh, Candace because she was typing so furiously. Oh, <laughs> she's yeah. an angry typer. I get it. You saw, yeah, someone was beating the you know what out of their keyboard. But so I, I found, it's her fingernails. She's an angry typer. You know not to go to that open door when she's typing. Nice. So I, I, I may have unlocked some stuff that that Candace doesn't have yet. So you know what? And I, I just want to to touch on that real quick. I. It, since we dropped that time management webinar and I instituted a uh, office hours, like a professor, right? Because I mean, constantly and everybody on this call, I know gets interrupted all day long. I, I, you can't do it, right? You have to get rid of those got a minutes. And since doing that, our production as an office has, go, has that almost doubled uh, <clears throat> over the last month, only because they're not constantly coming. They, they know, hey, at 9.30, from 9.30 to 10 in the morning and from 4 to 4.30, they can come to my office and we, we knock stuff out that would have been an interruption, right? And it's not only an interruption for me, but it's also an interruption for them because now instead of figuring out the solution or instead of uh, you know, whatever it is, they, they drop what they're doing and they come running in here. How do they, you know, so, so once that you eliminate that, people, the, productiv the productivity definitely increases. Right? And then they can focus on those most important uh, uh, efforts to, to increase their, their results. Yeah, awesome. So no truer words. So th there, there are strategies that you can implement, but the thing I want you to take away from this is your most important retention strategy is, is you and your ability to, to lead them to their most important outcomes, okay? So we're gonna get this all to you. Um, let's go ahead and get to um, acquisition strategies, right? So how are we going about and, and acquiring? What are strategies that you're implementing to acquire top talent? <laughs> All right, so I, yeah. up, I, I know one, always be recruiting. Right. The most right? important, right? Mm -hmm. if, if we're not always recruiting, then what happens is we only recruit when we need, and when we hire out of need, we hire duds. Mm -hmm. And then in three months, you look at them and you don't even want to come to the office, and you hate them, and you don't want, and it just, it, it, it just creates the cycle, right? If we're mm -hmm. always looking, hey, then, Great. We might find somebody when we don't need them. Well, guess what? If, if somebody can write 25, 30,000 in premium, I don't care. I'll move a mountain to bring that person in here. Mm -hmm. But you're not going to find that person when you need to find them. Ain't going to happen. Mm -hmm. Another one is, is assessments, guys. And no, no disrespect to, to ideal traits. Um, 
you know, they, they, they were first to market in this space. And back in the day, you know, personality was important, but we got to go far deeper than that. And, and in fact, in, in the other, before we send this out, Craig, you had, can they sell? We need to put why in front of it. Why can they sell? There are specific attributes that show up time and time again, specific to our environment that produce results. So yes, we need to, to we need to get ads out. We need to target. We need to fill the pipeline of candidates, but we need to be highly effective in terms of an acquisition strategy of filtering. We're not, we're not interviewing anybody based on resume. We're not interviewing anybody that doesn't meet that minimum level of threshold on our attributes list that says they, they, they have a propensity to likely do well in here. So that, that's got to be your baseline. Um, let's look at some others here. Lori Bray, I don't hire anyone with an insurance license. I train them. They don't bring baggage and bad habits. I, I, I love that, you know, and I'm not, I'm not suggesting it black and white, but for those of you that are hiring people only with insurance licenses because it seems easier, I invite you to test bringing in some folks from outside. Again, you can show them how to unlock their, their most important outcomes through making money with you, but be sure you're using assessments with them because you've got to minimize the investment of, of training that's going to take to get them up to speed in this space by unlocking the match of the attributes that already exist in that space. Uh, Alex Long, yeah, man, no truer words. I've had a great, I've had great success with getting new candidate referrals from my staff. So let's let's get all these down, Craig. Um, right, uh, another referral strategy, right? Yeah, hold on. Referral. Th now this now this is two things. Number one is um, if Alex is getting referrals from his staff, Alex's LSPs see him as a leader, as someone who's impacting their lives and they want to share that with other people so that's powerful guys that that comes back to that leadership piece um yeah all right we got it we got to keep moving uh the, someone give me one more i could do this all morning if i could all right so and, and for those of you that are in our world go back to your hiring vault right the six steps the six strategies for building your most effective LSP team. So we gotta look at that front end. We have to execute those specific strategies to be most efficient at hiring, at acquiring top talent. All right, now let's look at development. We wanna pull um, from that first one. It was, it was training, um, role play, right? So, so in our world, this is where you leverage the sales training vault or sales vault because now you have the assessment for all of your existing team. And you or your sales manager, your sales leader is, is constantly looking at all those attributes and is using either agency vault or weekly trainings to train specifically on the individual's gaps. Because listen, the, the, the LSPs, they want to grow. They, they have to grow, right? If we're not growing, we're dying, okay? But at the same time, they also don't want to be pulled off the phone. So you don't want to be training somebody as part of a group and you've got, you know, a third or half of the room that already exceeds very well in that. They're going to be aggravated at you because they're doing well in that. So you want to make sure you're training them on their gaps, so that you can maximize their time. Uh, Candice, we have an annual team bonding, building weekend getaway and make vision boards and bond as a team, right? Ding, 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 ding. This is awesome. And, and, and hopefully in there, but I'm assuming it with that, especially with the vision boards, is there's a lot of celebration. We need to, when we're developing our LSPs, we need to praise the heck out of them. They want that, right? They want to be acknowledged. They want to be praised. We got to celebrate, right? She says, absolutely. Of course she is. And this isn't, you know, Baron ping pong on Fridays and, you know, some, some BS like that, but it's there. She's taking them away, providing them value, creating vision boards of what they can go create, creating a bond and, and celebrating. That's a great example. What else?
What are some things that you guys are doing to develop your staff, to help them grow? Okay, I want you to write this down. Development equals growth. Remember, if we're not growing, we're dying. Okay. I'm on a webinar. Yeah, absolutely, right? Actually, that's a- agent that has the Facebook group. That, he said, that's if a, you're not developing your staff, yeah, and that, that this isn't a sales pitch, that was a testimonial, but send your, um, your LSPs to our boot camp. You know, send them to a training, get them grounded in some things. You know, after a while, your voice stops, to, you know, stops being heard. Send them to boot camp. It's, you know, it's, it, it's, a, it's gonna generate a multiple for them, but they're growing, they're learning. They're doing something else. And guess what? There's a reciprocation. When you invest in something for them, the natural law of reciprocation says they want to go back and, and show you that they, they that they've created this for you, that they've that this that that, that that they want to give back for your investment in them. Okay. What else? Anybody else? All right, well, I, I have to jump into a meeting here with, with Tony in a few minutes about this trip, but I've got about four minutes left. What, what questions uh, does anybody have for, for me or for Craig? Um, what can we do to, to bring this home? Let's see, I've gotten on this chat a lot of thank yous this yeah let me ask this question um oh can we do this on a monthly or quarterly basis absolutely there's nothing i enjoy more than this right so that's who do you think that's from guys candace and crystal right this is so much better and, and and think about this as you're going back to your teams they don't want to be taught at they don't want to be trained at workshop this is far more effective where, where do you think your best answers and solutions lie? Is it with you or is it with them on the front lines? It's them, right? So absolutely, you know, just, just stay on Craig or we'll, we'll set a reminder. I'm, I'm happy to hop on this quarterly. Um, everybody's saying how much value they got out of it. You know, you're welcome. This is, this is how I contribute. This is what Craig and I love to do. That's why we love that group. If you got a lot of value out of it, share in the group. What we're gonna do um, is we're gonna clean this up a little bit. If, you know, we'll just highlight staff and hiring development strategies or bold that. I think we'll put this recording in the, in the group. Um, we'll, we'll attach this if technology allows that, we'll do all that, okay? Um, anything else, Craig, you wanna bring this home for them? Yeah, so we are gonna, I'm gonna have this uploaded into the group. Uh, we have a, a, a handout too that we'll, we'll attach. Uh, we're gonna post the recording, or chop up the recording, put, put it over in the YouTube channel. Uh, so, so that's available. Just a reminder, I see a, a few names of, of folks who are gonna be on boot camp tomorrow. It does start tomorrow. Um, I'll throw the link in the chat if anybody is interested in participating in boot camp. Like I said, we're not, we're not here to sell anything, but we are here to uh, make stuff available. Uh, so you're more than welcome to hop in. I think that there's some spots left for that tomorrow. Um, and if you do have any questions, just shoot me a message in uh, Messenger on Facebook or, or you can email me, um, Craig at Agency Vault or Craig P at Allstate. Um, either way, we'll, uh, we can support you in whatever you choose to do. Awesome. Yeah, I'd love to see some of you uh, on there tomorrow. That, that training is tremendous. Or send your... Um send your LSPs. Well, thank you. Thank you for everybody who participated and played full out. Um, I, I get a ton of value out of this too. We take these learnings and we just, we just keep giving back. So we'll see you out in the Facebook group, make it an outstanding day and week, and we'll see y'all real soon. Take care, everybody. Thanks guys. Thank Thanks. Bye. Bye. Bye.